Hi friends, here we would like to find the relationship between shear force and bending moment at a given point of the beam. Please remember the relation between shear force and the bending moment at a given point of a beam is very important topic because with the help of this particular relationship in various cases we can find out how the shear force behaves at a particular point with respect to the bending moment and how the bending moment varies with respect to shear force. Okay, so now in order to derive a relationship between shear force and bending moment, we are going to consider a simply supported beam. So, we are considering a simply supported beam AB over here and it has got two support reactions. Let us say RA acting at point A and RB acting at point B. So, let us say the span length of beam is uh, L. Now, the loading of the beam can be of any nature. There may be point loads acting on the beam. There may be variable loads acting on the beam. So, for the sake of simplicity, let us consider a variable kind of loading is acting on the beam so that all possible cases of loading can be easily covered by that kind of loading. Okay. So, I am going to draw a variable loading. So, friends, we have got a variable loading acting on the beam from point A to point B. Now, this loading will be varying with the length. So, this is having a variable load intensity which is varying with the x. So, x is basically the length along this. Okay. So, let me show you the x friends. So, we say as we go towards right, this is called as x. So, as we go along the length of the beam, your intensity of the variable load is changing. Okay. So, intense, this is called as variable loading. So, I have taken the variable loading just to simulate all possible cases of load acting on the beam. It may be point load or it may be uniformly distributed load or it may be variable uniformly varying load. So, all kind of loads can be easily simulated with this kind of irregular loading or variable loading as I have shown. Now, we would like to find out the variation of shear force and bending moment diagram at a particular point. So, I am going to take a section at particular point. So, let us say this is the point at which I am considering a section. So, this is the point let us say at this particular section we would like to see the variation of shear force and bending moment. So, now this distance I am going to call as x. So, at distance x from point A, I have taken a section and at that particular section, I would like to find the variation of shear force and bending moment. Now, before going for the actual variation of shear force and bending moment, we should understand how shear force is going to act at this particular point. So, this point let me call as point C. This point I am going to call as point C. Point C is this point. Okay. So, at this particular point C where I have taken section, at this particular point, I would like to find the variation of shear force and bending moment. Now, so let us understand how the shear force is going to act on a particular plane passing through the point C. So, if you see this much portion of the beam, okay. So, we can say that the net force on this particular portion is acting in the upward direction like this. So, net force is acting in the upward direction. So, if you take another this part of the beam, this much portion of the beam, then the net force will be acting in the downward direction like that. Why? Because the entire beam is in equilibrium condition. So, if this was force is acting upward, the same amount of force will have to act downward direction in order to balance it and make the beam in the equilibrium condition. Okay? So, if you say this force will be acting in the upward direction. So, for this particular reference plane I have taken at point C, this is going to cause a upward shear like this. Okay? And for this particular plane, if you see in the right hand side direction, this particular force will cause downward shear like this. Okay? So, it will be something like this friends. So, this is the plane. So, one force will cause upward shear like this and the other force will cause downward shear like this. Okay. Both are taken as positive shear as per sign convention, but this is very important point to understand at this particular level. Okay. Now, what I will do is, I will consider another plane very close to this particular plane and this plane is passing through another point, point D let me call. And the distance between these two points, let me say, is very small distance and I am going to call that distance as dx. Okay, Infinite decimally small distance I have taken between point C and D. So, since this distance is very small, so this variation of force, here if you see, this variation of force will be insignificant or we can say that for this small distance, this load is almost like a constant here acting. Okay. So, in this particular portion, the load is almost constant or we can say it is like a uniformly distributed load acting at this particular point. So, here we can say that at this particular, for this particular portion, your load is not variable load, it is a constant load which is W. Okay? Because the distance is very small, so it appears to be almost like a straight line like this. Okay, friends. So, here 
I will be considering this much portion of the beam between point C and D. Let me do that. So considering very small length dx of the beam. So when I consider very small length of the beam, it will appear something like this friends. This is how the beam is going to look like. So we are considering a very small length of the beam which is having length dx. Okay, on this particular beam, there will be a constant load of intensity W acting. Okay, something like this because it's a very small length. So the variation is insignificant. So here we have a constant load intensity W is acting on the beam. Okay. The length of the beam is dx and we know that the shear force is going to act over here is this is the shear force acting over here so i'll call it as f fine so in the right hand side of this as we discussed over here so in the right hand side of this portion of the beam the shear force is going to act in the downward direction friends as we already discussed now as we know that here we got shear force as f so here there will be waste. you will not get same shear force at this right hand side why because we have shifted the plane from this point to this point from c to point d okay this is point c friends and this is point d so there will be small variation of shear force going to act because we are taking a small portion of the beam if you take a same section like this so if here is f there also is going to be f okay there is no problem about it okay but we have not taken like this we have taken a small offset between two planes okay so due if you take a small offset then shear force is going to change so if this is f this is going to be f plus df the small variation of shear force would come okay so we have got shear forces on this plane and this plane and this so this point is friends point c while this point is point d okay so kindly remember this so this is very much important to understand now the next point is due to loading your beam is going to bend something like this we can say this way your beam is going to bend so this is called as positive or sagging kind of bending okay so whenever this kind of beam is going to bend it means your bending moment is acting like this and like this okay then only your beam is going to bend in this way sagging okay so it means at across this plane these two planes there will be some bending moments are going to act so we will say that here we have some bending moment acting so if i say on this particular plane the bending moment acting is this way so let me call this bending moment as m so on this plane also you will be getting some bending moment same way right in the same direction like this so here you will get bending moment as m plus small change in bending moment that is dm so on this particular plane we got shear forces f here we got sh shear forces f plus df over here bending moment m over here bending moment m plus dm so dm or df indicates that small variation of shear forces and bending moments respectively from one plane to another plane okay so we are able to represent the entire case of shear forces and bending moments acting across plane c and plane d over the small portion of the beam having length dx which is at distance x from point a so now we would like to find the relationship between shear force and bending moment at this particular point c and d see c and d are very very close to each other so the, these two points are representing a single point on the beam okay because this dx is very small so what i will do is i will take this small portion of beam and i'll apply condition of static equilibrium so we'll do that so considering condition of equilibrium of the portion of the beam having length dx it's very straightforward friends so I'm going to apply the equilibrium of forces. Okay. Therefore, I can say that summation of forces in the vertical direction, vertical means why I'm saying equal to zero, right? So what you'll get from this? So from this, you'll be getting very simple friends. The upward forces I'm going to call positive and the downward forces I'm going to call negative. Okay. Upward force is F. This one friends, F plus DF is minus because it is acting downward. So and the minus again, this load W, but it is acting for the length DX. So W into DX will come. Because this is intensity, friends. W is the intensity. So W into dx. We have to multiply by the dis distance. That is length. Now we got this force, overall force. Okay. Then we got upward force and this downward force. There is no other force acting on this particular portion. So that is going to be zero, friends. If I simplify, I'll get F minus F minus dF minus W into dx equal to zero. Now here, if you see, F minus F gets cancelled out, right? So from here, if I bring W on that side, we'll be getting dF divided by dx. Equals minus W. Okay, so this is a very important outcome. We can say here, and the outcome says the rate of change of shear force with respect to distance at particular point equals the load intensity. But as far as magnitude is concerned, we can say it is equal to the load intensity, the magnitude. Okay, so that is very important outcome. We can say so. We can write down here the rate of change of shear force at any point of the beam. Equals the load intensity at that point. Okay, friends, this is extremely important point. The rate of change of shear force at any point of the beam equals the load intensity at that point of the beam. Okay, so we are able to get a relationship between shear force and the load intensity. 
I hope it is very much understood. Okay. Now we'll go one step further and we'll try to find out the relationship between shear force and bending moment. For that, I will take the condition of equilibrium that is summation of moment at particular point. So again, by using condition of equilibrium, friends, so we shall do summation of moment of forces about. You can take any point. I am taking point C. Okay. About point C. This must be balance or zero. Okay. So I am going to find the moment of all forces acting on this beam. About point C. Now, what I will do is so this load intensity W I am going to convert into point load. So it is something like this, friends. Okay. So this is going to be W into dx, and it is going to act at half length of this particular segment. So this this length is going to be from here to here is going to be friends dx by two. Okay. Just for calculation purpose, I am writing it. So now I will do take the moment about this particular point C. So we are going to take moment about point C. So let's see how we get the various moments acting about point c okay so first of all this force will not have any moment at this particular point c because it is acting through same point c this mo m it is clockwise so i'll take clockwise positive so there is a moment acting at point c is this moment which is m okay now next is the moment caused by this w dx so it is going to be w dx into length dx by 2 this also will cause clockwise moment so w Into dx load intensity into length into distance is going to be dx by two. This is again clockwise, friends. So that is why I have taken it positive. Now again, this force F plus dF will cause a clockwise moment. So it is F plus dF from point C. It is acting at distance dx. Okay, I have taken this also. This m dm is going to rotate the beam in in the reverse direction. That is anti-clockwise direction. So it is going to be minus m plus dm. Okay. Now I have taken all the possible moments acting on the beam. That is due to this. Clockwise moment, anti-clockwise moment, due to this clockwise moment, and due to this clockwise moment. So I have taken all these moment together. This is clockwise, friends. So this is positive, and this is anti-clockwise. So it is negative, like that, and that is equals zero. Now we will simplify this equation and let's see what we get. So if you simplify this particular equation, you will be getting m plus w dx d square by two plus again f dx. Plus df times dx minus m minus dm, friends, equals zero. Now, if you look at here, this this plus m and then minus m gets cancelled out. Okay, here you see dx square is there. So dx is a small term, so dx square will be further small. So dx square will be very small. So I can neglect this, so it is negligible. Okay. Similarly, df is small. So df into dx, two small quantities are multiplied. So df Into dx will also be negligible. Okay, so this I can neglect. This I can neglect. Okay, so remaining is what, friends? So remaining is now here. F dx, which is shear. F stands for shear force. I have told you. So F dx, then minus dm. Only this is remaining equals zero. So if I further simplify this, you'll be getting dm by dx equals f. Now we have got very important outcome here. So if you interpret this. it is basically the rate of change of bending moment it is basically the rate of change of bending moment with respect to distance equals to equals the shear force f stand for shear force so like we have rate of change of shear force at any point we have got rate of change of bending moment at any point okay but this is again with respect to distance so i can write down this rate of change of bending moment with respect to distance at any point Equals to shear force acting at that point. So this is a very important outcome of this particular expression, friends. So let me write down that also. So we can say here that the rate of change of bending moment with distance at any point of the beam equals to the shear force at same point of the beam. Okay. So we are able to get the relationship between the shear force and bending moment at a particular point of the beam. So this this gives you the relationship between shear force and bending moment. At a particular point of the beam. Similarly, we also got the relationship between the shear force and load intensity at a given point of the beam. Okay, so these two expressions are very important, friends, and this expression will help you to draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Okay, thank you very much.